Ooh, All right, welcome back to another wonderful episode of Waking the People after a week full of crazy, crazy ass <laughs> We're about to tear into something that may actually wake up a few people that's sitting on the fence snoozing. So I'm your host, Sir Chad Everbrochiers, and I am joined by my lovely co-host, Joshua McClendon. Joshua, you want to go ahead and take it away and tell us all what we're about to get a little sample of here or give us a sample and then we're going in for the main course good evening my fellow patriots our loyal subscribers thank you for tuning in to another episode of chad and i um yeah a deep breath it, it's so are you some of you are probably wondering why we're filming on a wednesday and that is because tomorrow i'm going up to see our first special guest to spend the weekend with him in uh washington dc my little brother um, so we had to do a little bit of a hump day episode. Uh, it's been quite the week, Chad, as always. It's, it's, it's not what we want to talk about. It's okay, we have to nitpick and choose what are the best things to talk about. And this week, um, I feel like it's a little more, definitely more morbid than normal. Um, normally we get to look at things and we kind of like to make fun of, you know, certain things that are going on in the political realm, you know, it's a little more laughable in a sense, but uh, the, the first topic we're going to talk about is the, the shooting in Colorado. I know that Chad and I um, did a, our last episode and we talked about the shooting in Atlanta and less than a week, you know, only a few days later, we're actually talking about another shooting. And um, actually I saw that today they arrested the guy in Atlanta who um, had body armor. He had five uh, weapons on him. Um, I don't know much detail about it. I think it was kind of just released. So there could have possibly been a third shooting within this week. Um, we're going to talk about um, some Arizona state legislature and some, some processes they're going through as far as the 2020 election that could have uh, major consequences moving forward as far as how the American public views our election. Um, and then, you know, we got some teasers. We got a little bit of everything. All my stock people out there, oh, you know, just just relax. You know, it, we'll, we'll make it through this. Every day is like living on the edge. But more importantly, Chad, you, you made a list this week. Okay. Why don't you tell us about that list you made? Oh, yeah. Wait, which list? Checking it twice. <laughs> I made a list of um, shadow banning. Now, for people that aren't really aware of it, there's really little to it's it's very challenging to figure out if you've been shadow banned because you don't get a heads up. You don't get any kind of acknowledgement. Uh, pretty much all you have to do in order to get shadow banned doesn't mean you're removed, doesn't mean you're blocked from anything. You see everything, all of that. You just have to put information out that like Facebook, for instance, doesn't like. They don't like it. You're not going to get a lot of people seeing your your post, anything that you put out there. They can see your comments because that's piggybacking on somebody else's post if it's on someone else's post. But for your own, uh, really the only way to actually notice if you are uh, in a shadow ban position doesn't mean that it's a long-term or guarantee forever or anything like that. Um, or it might be, it depends on how aggravating you are to uh, people. So yes, I have recognized throughout this entire week um, my engagement level has been next to nothing, even for some of my awesome material that I've been putting out, uh, some of the great posts and the craziness that I put out there. Um, I've got next to no feedback, next to no engagement this week. And normally I do get quite a bit of engagement or at least a fairly decent amount. Uh, so when that does come up, just be aware uh, those things do happen if you do notice it uh, or if you notice somebody's disappeared for a bit. It uh, doesn't mean that they've been put in Facebook jail. I've not yet been put in Facebook jail or any other social media jail. Although if I ever were, I'm the guy you want to be in that jail cell with. I'm fun. Uh, anyway, so I made the, I, I'm, yeah, I made a list and um, I actually think that I may have inherited the attention from another person that was actively um, kind of provoking <laughs> Facebook admin um, with a lot of inflammatory type of statements, all true. Um, but she just didn't really use a lot of tactfulness in the way she was communicating. So uh, you can get all kinds of strikes, guideline issues, things like that. But uh, in my social media, not YouTube, not Rumble, anything like that. It's just on more of just a basic platform. So, yep, made a list, baby. 
uh, which could mean that I'm doing the right things. Uh, but unfortunately, it comes at a cost, which means that we are not as visible, or at least I'm not as visible. Uh, Joshua is a bit more uh, tactful than I am at times because I love using my satirical humor, um, which I think is redundant to say that. But anyway, go with it. Uh, it's a it's another drinking episode. It is another drinking episode. Uh, it's hump, it's beer Wednesday. Uh, so uh, I didn't tell Chad about this topic, but I. Uh, when I was researching for today's episode, I came across um, one of my newly respected political, um, I'm not sure what he is now, actually. He's, 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 a, he's a politician, let's just leave it at that. But uh, your very own Barry Sanders found that Trump being banned from Twitter uh, made him uncomfortable. So the fact that we had someone who was so socialist actually come out and go against the current running administration and say that he found the fact that a former president was silenced on social media and on the internet uh, uncomfortable to him. So I first saw that and was like, wow, like if Barry Sanders is saying that like some of this stuff is, is, is craziness, then I can only imagine what, what, is, what is actually going on that we don't know about. And I, kind of, I wanted to segue just a little bit, like for all my like crypto listeners. So the fact that Chad is being shadow banned on the internet solely because Facebook controls um, this platform and this social media platform just shows you how like, for example, Ethereum, which is a decentral, decentralized world internet computer that no one can modify information. No one can censor anyone. It's all controlled through the, the blockchain of technology that constantly like interacts with like different uh, wrong information and in, incorrect information and will correct it immediately. So the, we just have to look at it from the standpoint that we are definitely being controlled and, and our constitutional rights just because we don't own certain um, internet platforms and it, it amazed me that I kind of put all the dots together as far as Bernie Sanders you know super socialist and you know this rise in cryptocurrency that's mainly geared towards decentralization of a lot of different things that shows you that there's a lot of people around the world that feel like we're kind of going in the wrong direction well I would definitely agree with that especially by the way that uh, this last or this week we've had multiple different countries kind of flexing to use some language of the youth that I find it's kind of comical when I use it. I laugh a little bit inside. I giggle. Uh, I giggle kind of like a little girl. Oh, don't, hey, my pronouns, my life. <laughs> but anyway, seeing what's going on with that, it's um, Russia, Putin. Now, I do want to say something, though. As much as I dislike Biden, Kamala, you know, the, the hyena Harris, and the rest of them, as much as I dislike them, um, and the administration, I do not want to see another um, country come along and start kicking the ass of the person that we have as an elected official. It's the head of our country. Um, now, I'm not saying that I feel that's a uh, legitimate uh, electoral process because I really don't think that was the case. But um, I don't want to see Putin kicking Biden's ass all over the place in the world stage. Now, if we can get some pay-per-view and you know, get some of that behind doors and nobody would ever know except for a very few people. Um, I definitely have a very strong feeling. I know who would win that debate, um, but I am a constitutionalist. Um, I am for America. Um, I'm for America being able to help other countries when we're stable in all aspects of stability, not this bullshit democratic idea of what stability is supposed to be, which is what they're leveraging everything on right now. Absolute nonsense. Um, so I don't want to see all that, uh, China coming along and projecting moral superiority against the United States saying that we have a moral dilemma with everything that's going on in our country and they're doing what they're doing to the Uyghurs, uh, forced slave camps and also organ harvesting, things like that. If it sounds crazy as shit, it's because it is crazy as shit. And because it's happening in China, which is a world superpower, there's not a whole lot that can be done. And if you're on somebody's payroll, you're not exactly going to do a whole lot about it either. But they're making some statements also that the United States has a moral issue and that we need to rectify those things and we don't need to be out 
proclaiming moral superiority coming from China, of all places. Now, uh, Russia is not a whole lot better, but as far as I know, they don't have concentration camps for slave encampments or organ harvesting. So, uh, um, but <laughs> they could take over the United States. I'm guaranteed they do it. Uh, so, and then North Korea. Let's face it, Kim Jong Un is a. It, it, they say that right. Yeah, yeah give my Florida cracker ass self whenever I can't pronounce a northern dictator, a uh, northern Korean dictator. And I do apologize to everybody. So, uh, yeah, so he is, um, you know, <laughs> he's kind of like little buddy with nukes, you know, and I don't mean little buddy in an endearing way. I mean it kind of like a, a comical way. He's not exactly running the country all that great in North Korea either, but for North Koreans, a lot of them are well brainwashed or gaslit. They don't know what else is going on, so they they do what they do because uh, they don't know any better. You know, good luck getting out of the country. So fortunately, we're not there. Give the right political party long enough, and I do mean the left in this. Um, I'm sure they'd be happy to see us in that type of situation. They've already threatened it on Florida with DeSantis telling him that if uh, Florida does not given to uh, Dr. Falsey and um, Biden's position on quarantining and how to handle the virus of oh, this horrible virus um, that he's going to end up tracking and, and restricting movement throughout the United States. Um, that is a dictator move. So uh, he can kiss my ass. Short, sweet. All right, Joshua, I'm, I'm, I'm ranting, buddy. This yeah, is a tip. Yeah, that was that. Welcome yeah. to Wednesday. All right, so here's what we got going on. Give it to us, baby. It's it's really like it's it's kind of horrible when you think about all like mass shootings are almost the normal now. Like when you see like a mass shooting on TV now, I think like they really started to ramp up. I want to say I could be wrong in the numbers. Like I want to say like 19 like 60s is kind of when mass shootings really became uh, much more pronounced in society than before. And the fact that we have to talk about two, like within a span of six days or so is, is, is crazy. And so we had this 21 year old in Boulder, Colorado, which is, um, it's the, 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 the city that hosts the University of Colorado. Um, uh, he went into a, uh, a, a, like a grocery store. It's like a low, I think it's called Kings. It's like a local grocery store. It's not really like a Publix or a Walmart, but, um, he went in there and with an AR-15 with body armor, um, he had a sidearm as well, and he um, executed 10 people. And uh, there was a lot of people in the store um, from what the videos I've seen and kind of just like people who are witnesses and were in the store when it happened, a lot of people were able to get out. So thank goodness that not everyone or there was not more people killed, but um, he was cited to having mental health issues. He was enrolled in a hospital uh, prior to this. Um, he bought the gun six days before the shooting. Um, and so, yeah, th there's, there's so much that, that comes from events like these, especially politically. Like, all I've really ever seen on the TV since this happened is, is, is gun control. And yeah. um, uh, I looked up some of the numbers as far as what type of guns cause the most death in the United States, and 68% uh, were handguns. And so, the, and uh, AR-15s and rifles were actually like eight percent as far as the actual uh, death rate due to those weapons. And I feel like that we're always focusing on the wrong issue. Like it's it's, it's guns. Whatever you feel about guns, guns are um, oh they're all, they're a tool. They're 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 a device. Someone has to use those guns. And I feel like that mental health should really come over um, gun control. I feel like that not enough emphasis is put on mental health over the person wielding the weapon versus the weapon itself. And I feel like that because of that, the people who wouldn't mind um, going the extra mile to doing all the you know necessary things to have a firearm kind of get pushed out of the picture where the people actually committing these acts um, are not mentally stable the majority of the time. And then all the blame kind of gets put on the weapon itself. Yeah. You know, I remember back when they were trying to um, ban lances and swords 
you know, once they were successful in getting rid of those things, we all seem to actually do a lot better. I mean, people stop killing each other. <clears throat> and I'm making a, <clears throat> a bit of a joke about the fact that <clears throat> mental health will always be a key element. Uh, what means of murder or attack is, you know, to say, okay, well, you know, if he didn't have a gun, he wouldn't have been able to do as much. Well, people make bombs. Also uh, in the UK, uh, firearms are banned. There's only so many people, certain people that can have access to them. Um, they're really strict on them in the UK. Knife crime is a major issue there. Uh, I'd mentioned this in a previous show, and um, I will end up bringing up the video where there's an officer standing there responding to a woman that had just been stabbed multiple times. Uh, the suspect was attempting to try to cut her throat. The officer came over. Uh, the officer couldn't tell who the person was that was trying to do it. There was multiple people around her. And the guy snuck back over and started stabbing her again while the officer's right there. You know, uh, to think that guns are the issue, guns are not the issue. Mental health is the issue. Um, agitating people in a political position that gets their emotional uh, excitation so high, gets them so excited that they're willing to go beyond and act out a fit of rage. That is more of a problem than the firearms themselves. Though there's plenty of places on this planet where firearms are not an issue. United States, if you take in the consideration of all people who own firearms in the United States, that's not our issue here. Our issue, I've studied psychology as my preferred subject, and that's what I went to college for. You find out mental health is a bigger issue, but mental health is a very broad subject. So with this, what we have right now is we have one particular political party agitating people's emotional states across the board, but they're getting in in a completely different a battleground that the, the people on the right are not doing what the people on the left are doing. The people on the left are constantly using hyperbolic, emotionally stimulating language. They are saying things to get people riled up emotionally, either to and the catering side, the loving side, the, the empathetic side is, I, I want money from you, which is what I get in my emails. You, you, can you believe this is going on? And you should probably donate to us so that we can overcome these horrible Republicans, because these idiots still send me stuff. Uh, well, I guess if you're non-party, they don't give a shit. They're going to send you all kinds of things. So, and then you've got... The well, th the very first thing released whenever this Colorado shooter went off was everybody jumping on saying that it was a white supremacist and almost guarantee that that was a Trump supporter. Well, lo and behold, we find out the man is a Syrian. He's from Syria. We also find out he is a never Trumper, uh, that he was a Democrat. Um, and he had a lot of uh, emotional challenges. So, but what are we going to do? Since we can't blame the white guy, we're going to blame the gun. So, and then what does jackass in office do? I'm pleading to the Senate, push this through. We need a common sense gun laws now. Just like common sense immigration. We've had it. We don't need new uh, immigration we need the Democrats to stop standing on one side of the fence going, come over, salvation, and their, your oasis is right here. So Republicans and the majority of the way that we've done uh, immigration on several party levels have been the way that we have been doing it, which is we're, we're integrating people into society that are vetted. But no, what do we get? We get these jackasses sitting on the other side going, come on over. We're going to give you everything. We're going to put our National Guard troops, shove them into a freaking... Uh, a parking garage, but we're going to make sure we, we procure some hotels for you. So uh, come on over. We're also going to make sure that we can get some stimulus money to you as well. Uh, but we're still struggling throughout as far as Americans go. Point is, is that now that they have this other thing that they can actually say, you know, let me trigger people emotionally so that they overreact. So whenever something does happen, we're all fearing that the sky is going to fall because we have these people that are supposedly our elected officials that are treating us all like fucking assholes as if we're the ones that owe everybody everything. So, and, what, and I mean Americans owe everybody everything. So, and Bashwa, I, I, I believe I'm saying it correctly. Bashwa, I posted this the other day uh, and obviously no one saw it or actually I didn't get any response to this. Um, the word is, it means, it's what the Chinese referred to the American, or it's actually the Western political left. 
uh, predominantly the white virtue signaling left. Um, it's a it's a epithet. It's a it's a insult. It's something they made fun of. You know, Western left politics. You know, the 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 white left uh, the white left that virtue signal all the time. They were making fun of us, the, not us, but the left side of our political party. Uh, they, were, they were using that to make fun of them up until 2016. They stopped doing it. The next thing you know, they start putting stuff out that's actually going to provoke them versus make fun of them or ridicule them. We were a joke. We were entertainment to them. And now they've weaponized these people on the left and they don't even know it. They've weaponized this by race issues, gender issues, things like that. If you'll notice that whenever the NBA, uh, somebody criticizes China and the NBA, the NBA site full silent, or they redirect, they won't let you talk about it. Why is that? Well, uh, a lot of Chinese money is involved in the NBA. A lot of our sports organizations, uh, a lot of the things that we find that we like, Hollywood itself, by the way, I know I'm on another one of those tirades, but Hollywood itself, did you know that the majority of the Hollywood movies, the big blockbusters, they actually cater them to the Chinese population? because they're a bigger market for them than the United States. So they release specific photo and artwork and things like that here, where there was the one with, uh, I guess, The Last Jedi or what, not The Last Jedi. Were, which one was that? Where um, Finn was on the cover and he was big, he was up front, but because in China, they're so, they, they really are very racist in China. Uh, oh, you want to talk? yeah. And like the, the, the Hollywood press, like the people who make the movies, God, those people are so racist. Mm -hmm. and like anyone who's like in acting will tell you that Hollywood is like sexist, racist as hell. I mean, look at Harvey Weinstein. Like it, it's, 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 it's never ending over there in Hollywood. So I have no doubt that they're, that, that the Chinese are, are, well, I mean, very racist. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But to, to tie it back over and then to throw it back in your court there is, it's we're emotionally manipulated. And that was what China made fun of us about as far as then I mean we as but there's a large population represented by the 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 left, the liberal left, and the white liberal left, uh predominantly. And those are the ones that typically do lead off emotion. Uh, they don't really speak a whole lot with logic as much, although they typically are. You do find a lot of college graduates kind of lean that direction. Um, but you will find that a lot of them are very emotional. Uh, overall, and that was what we were being made fun of by China. If you don't believe it, look on my Facebook page. Go to go to my main page. Uh, you'll find it in there with no likes or I don't. You can't see views, but no likes really. There's nothing on it. There's no comments. There's really nothing there. But it's actually linked back to uh, Wikipedia and the definition, and it gives you the origin of that word. But that's important to understand while we're talking about this because this is how the Democrats control people. They hit them at the emotion. First thing, right out of the shoot, the Colorado shooter was a white supremacist. Next thing you know, the Facebook profile of the gentleman or this guy that just got arrested for the shoot, this alleged shooter, which people say that because they don't want to get sued, um, even though he's been arrested and he, he's being charged. For it. Um, this individual is, uh, his name, he's actually from Syria. He is Muslim. Um, he is a never Trumper. He's a Democrat. Um, he's got all kinds of posts about all kinds of things that are just pretty much all talking points that come from left-leaning me uh, media. <laughs> so, but all of that is being controlled by the left media uh, and Democrats. If you notice, their language is always emotionally hyperbolic. It's emotionally charging. Uh, Trump may have spoke with vague hyperbolic language, but he didn't really, like that's a salesman tactic. What you see on the other side is a gaslighting tactic. Uh, and what they do is they make you question your own sanity over time. You see something, you're like, well, that looks like this. And they tell you what you watched or what you, you witnessed. And they tell you it actually is something different than what you come to understand yourself. Before you know it, you're like, why the hell am I bothering trying to learn it? They're teaching me everything that I need to know. They got it down. They have degrees. They're in front of the camera. They've, they must have people researching this. And it's that pleading to authority for uh, It's the credulousness pleading to authority. So, all right. I have ranted, my man. Yeah, I have absolutely ranted. You know, it's Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. Gosh. No. But uh, yeah, I feel like if, if we always try to ban the guns, right? We get back to what we were talking about. We always try to ban the guns versus actually, okay, so if you want to buy a firearm, one, I'm actually surprised it was only a six day period between when he bought it and when he got it. 
I'm pretty sure Florida is two weeks. Like if you buy a gun, it's especially, you know, a, a semi-automatic rifle, which I, I, they love to call them assault rifles that they're, I mean, they're really not, I mean, it's, it's more, it's just a semi-automatic rifle and they are right. It's air light, right? Board. So instead of focusing on what initially caused the event, which is mental health, and he was actually in the hospital for mental health issues, let's, let's change. If you want to change some laws around, instead of banning firearms, let's make everyone who wants to buy a gun have to go and have a psychiatric, psychiatric evaluation. Go have a psychiatric evaluation. A doctor signs off that you are mentally stable enough to go buy that firearm. Then you will go buy, buy that firearm. Now, here's what I love about that idea. It's because the people who are, are mentally stable and are responsible and want to own a firearm and you know exert their Second Amendment right, they will go get that psychiatric evaluation. The people who are not will not because they can, right? Instead of taking away the actual instrument, which I think has more value than people understand, and not to sign kind of, you know, not to sound, um, you know, ap apocalyptic, I guess you could say. But the reason I feel that they're really focused on AR 15s is because there's been several situations in US history where um, the American, American people had to defend themselves against the government in ways that uh, the government was overreaching. Um, and I mean, not to say I completely agree with certain situations that happened, but I mean, you can look at the Waco incident. Um, you can look at, uh, there was an incident in Texas where ranchers actually fought off the federal government with AR-15s because the federal government was trying to take their land illegally. So it's, it's not guns. They don't want guns that where if need be, the American people had to defend themselves, um, that those guns would then be effective. If, if what I mean, like, so like if a soldier shows up in full gear and you have a nine millimeter handgun, you don't have much stake in the game. But if the need be where that situation occurred and you had an AR-15, you would be in much better position to defend yourself, especially when they start targeting like magazine rounds, like, you know, Biden, I have a video on my Facebook about, it's a horrible freaking video, about Biden, like asking this guy to go outside with him and just completely, you know, just oblivious to everything. This poor Sleepy Joe. But he kept, they always talk about magazine capacity. And I understand that from the aspect of school shootings, but I feel like what they're really trying to focus on is the effectiveness of that weapon, not just in the weapon sense, but as far as how many rounds that weapon can go. And so it, it's a double-edged sword. Like I said earlier, that 68% of, you know, homicides in the United States that are, you know, done by a firearm, 68% of them are handguns. They're not actually AR-15s. And so if we wanted to limit gun violence, why don't we target all guns instead of this, these specific, specific guns who could have a grave impact if need be that the United States need to invoke one of its constitutional rights and have a people's militia. So there's just a different way to think about it. Yeah. Well, I've got a few things to say about that. Mm -hmm. The first one I'd like to say is actually, I have a friend, her name's Jenny. Uh, she's a firearms instructor. I guarantee you if she was carrying and in that, uh, in that uh, grocery store at the time, uh, that guy would likely not have gotten that far. Mm -hmm. so, in most it, incidences, that's the case too, not to cut you off chat, but in most incidences where mass shooters are stopped, it's actually by an arms, uh, an armed civilian, not the police. So it's a, and especially in the state of Florida. You think about it, how long does it usually take police to respond? At least now, seven minutes, right? At least yeah, seven. It's somewhere around seven minutes in the average for most areas. And then once you get into rural areas, you, you go up a little bit more. So, but here's a question for everybody watching. What does AR stand for, for AR-15? Now, obviously, Joshua, you're not allowed to answer that, but for the witnesses or the people that are actually tuning in, what does AR stand for? The average person believes, or at least the average anti-gun advocate or gun control advocates, uh, they believe that it means assault rifle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will tell you this, and you're welcome for the education. It does not mean assault rifle. It means armor light, which is a brand. It's a company. And they call it AR because it's armor light. They shortened up their own name and said, 
we're going to go with AR, and this is the 15th, I believe it, in the order of that, is it's that's the 15th uh, firearm or rifle style that they made or something along those lines. I don't actually have the full history of it, but the point is, is it does not mean assault rifle. I actually watched a supposed firearm expert say whenever, I don't know if you saw this video, this guy was like showing him how to fire uh, a pistol, and he goes, and you see this right here, if you flip this, it puts it in full semi-automatic. And as soon as he said that, I'm like, this guy's a fucking idiot. <laughs> There's no such thing as full semi-automatic. So for the people that aren't aware of this, I, I grew up around firearms. I was actually sighting like rifles when I was about four years old. Not on my own. My father was setting them up. And I'm like, daddy, what are you doing? You know, because I was a cute fucking kid. You know, and my dad's like, come over here. I want you to have respect for firearms. So he helped me sight it in. He already had the gun all set up. All I do is pull the damn trigger. But still, shooting quarters, stuff like that. Don't tell the government, though. No, even though this is 30 plus years ago. Uh, Goddamn, almost 40. Anyway, all right. So I grew up with a very healthy respect of firearms. Now, what people don't know about a firearms, whenever it comes to semi-automatic, is semi-automatic means one pull of the trigger the mechanism of the gun will reload the next cartridge or the next bullet oh cartridge the fuck am i talking about video games over here <laughs> oh now i'm really dating myself going back to atari yeah. um, it puts it back in so now now you have another one ready to go but you have to pull the trigger again in order for it to fire again so older style weapons and or um let's say Single fire weapons would be bolt action, muzzle loaders, things like that. Those are single fire. Now, semi automatic means I pull the trigger like a revolver, pull the trigger, the next bullet's ready to go, but I got to pull the trigger again. Okay, that's semi automatic. Those are not assault rifles or assault weapons. I mean, of course, I mean, I got assault shoes. If you want assault weapons, I'll get you an assault shoe. You're going to ban that. So you know, my mom hit me with a flip flop when I was a kid, and I got a little trauma for that. Oh, I, poor me! No, you no, know, you know, maybe that should be an assault flip flop. No, you know, no, assault rifles are not legally. Uh, you cannot own them as a le uh, legally as a citizen of the United States without very special approval, and you don't go to the gun shop to get it. Hell no, it's class assault two. Assault rifles is a military grade rifle. That is something they use in the military only. You no. Know, that's where you can switch the, 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 the triggering mechanism, the firing mechanism, to go full automatic. By the way, full automatic is usually more suppressive fire than it is for accuracy because oh, guns yeah. have what's called recoil. So, so yeah, semi automatic or full automatic <laughs> is the gun is usually, it's very hard to control when you're shooting with all, a full automatic. Now, I'm also, I didn't serve. But I study, study like crazy. So with that, semi-automatic means you pull the trigger, another bullet goes in, but you have to pull the trigger again in order to get that one to go. But there's no other mechanism required in order for you to get the next bullet in. Correct me if I'm wrong. Not a single weapon that you could purchase on a civilian side of the United States is an assault weapon in the term assault rifle. That is a military grade. We can't get those. So with that... There you have it. So the next time somebody says AR stands for assault rifle, you got to realize you're not dealing with somebody who's educated. You're dealing with somebody who CNN spoon fed stupidity into their head. Oh, MSNBC, Kamala Hyena Harris probably did a bit of it too. Oh, so, oh, you're going to go to the border? <laughs> oh my broomstick flew away i guess i gotta answer that question no not right now i'm sure i will again sometime in the future uh-huh yeah don't worry 25th amendment's coming all right it's it's ridiculous because this situation the colorado shooting that the, the increase in mass shootings is a big deal and um i think that this current case the colorado case is going to get a lot more media attention than let's say some previous cases for example i mean who remembers the last time we've heard anything about the las vegas shooting i mean the most deadliest shooting in american history 
I have not heard one single bit of information past 48 hours of that event occurring. And there's a lot of interesting, interesting aspects of that current situation. And I feel like that we, the American people, are spoon-fed certain information to guide us in a certain direction and not necessarily get to the actual the bottom line. So yeah. um, I think that's kind of that's kind of why Trump, I feel like, was such a polarizing event in American history because a part of me was thinking the other day is it that Trump woke the American people up in the sense of what's actually going behind the curtains that we don't know about or is is this a new movement where we you know we the people are becoming more in tuned in what's going on and I think that they're, they're very intertwined I feel like that a lot of this stuff has been going on for a long time as far as like political uh, political corruptiveness. Like if you don't think that the government's corrupt, then I don't know what to tell you. I don't care what side you're on, they're corrupt. And I feel like Trump was like a guy who got in and that what, wasn't really part of the club and that he got a lot of animosity because of that and the fact that he was not controllable. Um, so yeah, I don't know. and 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 it, it could be the deep state being pissed off. It could be, uh, it could it could be a lot of things. So it's but it's funny how now, because of Trump, there's so many people who are you know completely either hate him or there's people that completely love him. And I feel like there's got to be some 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 merit to what he brought forth to you know the the grand stage, so to speak. Yeah, you know I think that it's it is one of those things. It was hard to sit on the uh, sit on the fence. When Trump was in office, really hard to sit on the fence. I was sitting on the fence because I really was focused on so much more in my life. So when it comes to this, don't forget not to jump subjects too quick, but just just a little side note. Whatever you do, don't forget. Nancy Pelosi has recorded. You can cat. You can get the video. Um, her saying, "Never let a good tragedy go to waste." Oh, maybe not exactly verbatim, but that's the the vein of it is. Don't let a, um, a good tragedy go to waste. So that was recorded over the pandemic, uh, but it tells you something about a way a person thinks. You know, so with this, the first pivot point when the Colorado shooting thing happened was people going apeshit crazy over it, right? So um, they were like, you know, it's a white supremacist and I guarantee it's a Trump supporter. There was people like public figures saying they'll donate, they'll, they, they'll, they'll wager their salary on it. Uh, and then within hours, it's released that the guy's from Syria is Muslim and he was a Democrat. So um, if people don't think that we're at a political or that we're in a, a political war right now, uh, you probably hit snooze a few too many times on your um your clock or your alarm clock there in the morning. Uh, Cause we are, uh, and it's in our face, you know, they've, they've, they're getting our children to start viewing things differently to the point where, you know, turning children against their parents kind of stuff, that kind of thing. It's, it's fucking freaky, you know, to think that we send our kids off to college, they come back, you know, protesters and activists, whenever you send them off to get an engineering degree, you know, what the fuck, Right. Like it's time to wake up, people. We are not dealing with what we thought we'd be dealing with at this stage in our life. Uh, the left is crazy as shit. There's plenty of bad like people on the right, too. A lot of rhinos, a lot of people that just are not standing up for their oath of office. It's a lot of that stuff going on. But with this, we have the incident that took place in Atlanta. They're only highlighting the fact that there were some of the people that were victims of that shooting were Asian. They are not bringing up the white victims. People say a lot with what they don't say. So they, they say what they say, but whatever they leave out in the void tells you a lot. So if you're getting information from people like that, think again about what you're hearing and will you take it without any skepticism? As when I hear there were seven, how many people were total that, kill, that were killed in Atlanta? Do you recall I again? Six, I think I think there were six, six people killed. Right. And remember, so, don't forget, guys, do not to cut you off, Chad, just for a second, but don't forget, yeah. guys, that there is an increase in Asian hate crime, but it's not in the areas that they're choosing to present to you. That we, we went over the last episode that 
uh, violent crimes against Asian people went up 800 and something percent. No, I think it was like three. No, actually, I have to go back and look at the exact statistic, but it was hundreds of percent in the state of New York. And so if there are hundreds of percent increases as far as hate crimes and homicides against the Asian community, why didn't you choose to present one of those? Why was it this particular situation that you chose to present to bring awareness to this obviously increasing, you know, um, uh, you know, event that's happening in our country? It's it's the nitpicking is what makes people mad. It's not the actual event. We went over again that there is an increase, but it's what they're choosing to present to back up that claim doesn't yeah. match. It's like okay, so why are you now choosing? It's like it's like they're constantly using that that race bait, I want to say, because it creates an emotional charge. And I feel like most people, I hope, are more, you know, human, I guess humanitarian, I would say, and the fact that there is an issue, hell yeah, let's address it. Let's do it. Let's let, let's let's fix this thing. But that's not the case. They're they're picking and choosing when they bring up certain issues that they know are going on. Yeah. You know, there may have been there is a, an increase from what we can see, but again, we see through the media. There's not a whole lot of like individual experience. I don't have any individual experiences of an increase of Asian hate crime. As an individual, what I've witnessed without the media, as a person, I don't see that, but we're told it. Now, I will say this. I'd also like to see the statistics on what the increase of white, like, uh, on, uh, racism or attacks on white people are. Oh, it's, I'd really like to see that. Now, and if you really start looking at it, a lot of the individuals that we look to for credibility, we also look to for academic success, um, intelligence factors, things like that. Again, I went to school for psychology. I will tell you this. The majority of the people that I see that are making commentary about what's going on, specifically the ones that are supposed to be authorities, they're so tribally embedded and invested that they're not looking at it from a non-biased perspective. If you look at it from the non-biased perspective, you will start to notice that a great deal of the people that we see um, that are saying what's going on and what's wrong and all of that are in specifically excluding certain individuals. That's called a bias. But whenever you don't look at it from the individuals that are doing this, you're gonna say, well, this must be all that's going on because people have a habit of believing whatever they see on the media must be true. So with that, Asian hate crime must be on the rise. I know, and I've experienced it myself, very close to my family. Uh, actually, one of my brothers experienced you know, more of it. It was a verbal altercation that could have led to a hate crime that by the media standards would have been more than enough to get TV crews there. But my brother, he's just, he's a man. He's like, you know what, if you don't like me because I'm white, fuck you. You know, that's on you. You're not going to make a friend with me then. And my brother went on his way into the grocery store and shopped, uh, did what he had to do. And he was assaulted by this other individual, verbal leading towards physical assault, um, simply because he walked down the wrong side of a car when he was walking in. Didn't inconvenience the person or anything. The person got out, started yelling, started calling him all kinds of racial epithets. Um, but no, 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 no. Uh, we're we, these these individuals that are doing it. They must be the Trump supporters. They must be the bad people. So uh, pay attention to who's telling you what's going on, because those are the people that if you don't watch it, you're the one that'll be. It's going to end up being a victim of it. You just may not be the victim that's laying in the street, but you may be supporting it. You know, and every time somebody goes to speak up, like myself or Joshua uh, or other people like us, when we go to speak up, you want to come at us and attack us and say that we're bigots or something like that. The only person ever continues to remind me about skin tone and about like hate and reasons to hate is the left. It's the only people that remind me of that shit. It's true. It's not the right. No one on the right is telling people to hate people because of the skin tone. Libertarians either. They don't talk about race ever. Libertarians. Yeah. I, I'm a, I'm partially libertarian, not in the party though, but whatever. But still point is pay attention to who the hell is that's guiding your mind. Cause I damn sure I'm not going to let somebody guide my mind without me having some skepticism about what's going on. And if you think I'm a, a Trump sycophant, you're fucking wrong. So 
I have my issues with him too, but at least it wasn't an insider. He wasn't bought in. He didn't have a, a legacy of favors that's gotten him to the point where he got to be president, not from a political side. So when he talks about the swamp, there you go. Oh, who's telling you what's going on? Hate crime in uh, Atlanta. But no, it couldn't have been a hate crime. It was one man from Syria who was a Muslim who killed 10 fucking people in a grocery store. And all 10 of those people, as best as I know, and I'm pretty certain of this, all of them were white. But it wasn't a hate crime. No, it was a mental illness for this gentleman. But the situation in Atlanta, even though the guy said that it was because of his religious beliefs and he felt the sexual impurities led him to doing what he did. I'm sorry. Again, I studied in college this stuff, and I will tell you this. That's what we would refer to as, again, I'm not licensed, so don't go down that road. That's a mental illness, okay? That is a very unstable mental position. Then again, I'm not going to say the guy in Colorado isn't mentally ill either, but I am going to say that the media chose not to call it anything other than that. So as far as the media is concerned, fuck you. Thank you for misleading all of us. No, actually, no, fuck you on that too. No, thank yous. You're, you are the cancer. Yo, know, it's the media and those politicians that continue to reinforce it and the money that's influencing them. That's the cancer to this country. And I stand for taking our country back from these idiots, these radical lunatics that have taken over because they've exploited elements of narcissism that capitalism can breed. That's where my problem is. And I'm sticking my flag in the ground. I'll die on the hill. Just take the country back, not the insurrection approach, but let's take it back by being understanding calculated grow a resistance that actually says this is our fucking country you're not going to turn it into venezuela and we're not going to be a garden for china oh i'm done with the bullshit from those nice sentiments of life where people are like well if you can't say anything nice don't say anything at all well how about we fucking beta everybody no thank you i'm gonna say things that aren't always nice Plus, also, I'm not going to live in a prison that's going to be up to whether or not you deem what I have to say is nice or not. That's not on me. That's on you. Time to grow up, America. Time to grow up world. Get over it. Let's get back to the point where we can all coexist. Because right now, we damn sure aren't coexisting from the party of inclusion. Fucking assholes. All right, Joshua, I'm sorry, man. I'm a little fired up. Got some rum filling the veins. No, it's true. I mean, it's... The, the, the beauty, the, the beautiful part about America is, is, is the unity aspect, right? And that the fact that, um, you know, not everyone gets it right. People make mistakes. Um, actually, I mean, Chad and I's relationship is actually kind of beautiful in a sense, because when Chad first met me, I think it was in 2016, and I was yeah. an asshole. Um, I was uh, very narcissistic. Um, I thought that I could do everything myself. Uh, I was just a, not a not a good human being, and Chad didn't quit on me. I think that's uh, that's kind of the ultimate thing that I want to bring America back to is in the sense that we are not all that different, and and that that we're you know that the media, which is really controlled by the left, is gearing us into the sense that there's this racial um, bias that everyone has. It's against one another. It's completely false. I mean. It, there, there, there's going to be, there's always going to be those people. And those people, um, they normally don't have a major role in society. So I don't feel like we need to create this picture or narrative that the majority of a certain political ideology feels that way. And because it's, it's simply not the fact. And again, I like how you talked about how um, the media chooses to label certain incidences of certain things instead of the addressing the, you know, the ultimate, you know, cause of this, this situation. Uh, it goes back to my previous example, as far as Apple being able to make the perfect iPhone, you know, if, if Apple could make the perfect iPhone and you would never have to buy a new one, but what's the point then? You can't make anything, you know, you, you can't make anything off of it. And I feel like that, you know, um, the media is like that. And the fact that they could really bring forth some very valuable multiple issues on, a lot of different fronts that would ultimately cause a, you know, a 
very good shift in humanity and they choose not to do it because that doesn't fit their specific agenda. And I love how the media has then transformed into this, um, you know, political platform, which they're not supposed to be. They're supposed to be a, you know, a public voice in the sense to give political parties the right to voice their opinions to the public, but not necessarily support a specific ideology over another. That's called being a political platform, and that's not what they're meant to be. So, um, you know, all you beautiful, you know, Facebook listeners, I think Chad and I are going to have to transition off, and we're going to talk about whether we think that Biden will be president a year from now, because I've heard from people who I had no idea felt a certain way tell me that they do not think that he will be. So, uh, yeah, that'll be interesting. You got to join us. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Please pound that bell, so to speak, and get our notifications and and come see, you know, come see us of our channel. It, it's a good time. It's Wednesday. I know you guys are going to be okay. Just stay golden. Keep your head down. Keep grinding because ultimately, I think it's all going to come out good on the end. You know, the night is dark. It's just before the dawn. And I feel like that we learn the best lessons in life going through hard times that ultimately lead to good times. So come join us. Hi, yeah. Ron. Yeah. Just had to hit Welcome them. back. All right, y'all. All right. We're going right into it, so let's get into this bad boy. All right, Josh, what's the next one, buddy? I don't know. We're, you know, we're just talking about Chad fucking, you know, some tangents, man. I mean, we're – it just shows you, like, the state of what's going on right now and how tense. I mean, I can't walk down the street and not hear something that's not political. Seriously. I, sometimes I feel like – if you've ever watched the show Lucifer, which is, like, one of my favorite shows on Netflix, and I can't believe the Christian I'm saying that, but damn it, it's a good show, and it actually has a really good message behind it. But anyway, like he has this ability to where he can like attract people's desires. And sometimes I feel like I have that ability with people's political ideologies and then like economics. Like it's just like I meet like a random person and somehow we migrate into this conversation about immigration. And I'm like, how did we get here? This is a McDonald's. <laughs> like I do not want to talk about uh, Ethereum right now. So it, it's seriously, it's like we are in such a polarizing political environment that it's just it's almost unbearable just to exist yeah well you know what it does it does put your finger on the pulse right like for me i'm like right there i can feel my pulse the good thing is is it means that you give a damn about something so the other side for you know if like, up until this point i'm sure if you've watched from the beginning until now you've recognized i've gone off on a couple of tangents that the tangents are impassioned, got a lot of stuff going on. We're just seeing stuff. And it's like, I am most of the time cool, cal uh, cool, calm, calculated. When we do the show, usually I let a little bit more of the comical side of myself come out. But watching the things going on, it's like, it's like, who's watching right now? Who believes that Biden's going to make four years? I personally don't think he's going to make six months. I think he's got two months left. Before they, they they make an announcement or they start really making it obvious they're making the moves. If not, then already have invoked the um, the 25th Amendment. Yeah. For fuck's yeah. sake, Biden's referring it to the, the Kamala is president. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was like, I mean, he asked Nancy Pelosi if it was okay if he answered questions. And I mean, oh. the, 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 uh, whether you like, like him or not like whether you are just maybe against trump like i feel like that's the majority of the case i see a lot of people that were super like pro biden defund this shit you know green new deal and when you know push come to shove and you got to pay 286 at the gallon all i see them doing is posting where are the low gas prices at so i feel like a lot of people are kind of guided in this direction that is joe biden but going back to the fact that you know He's just, he, I don't know if he's that stable enough to be our president. Like, think about it. Like, who's more stable, Elon Musk or Joe Biden? I mean, <laughs> it's, seriously. So uh, that's not it. a fair comparison. But, I mean, <laughs> it, it used to be that our president was, like, the best dude for the job. Like, that's what it used to be. George Washington did not want to be president, but he, it was a public duty. It was a public servant to go and serve your country for four years, whether you wanted to or not, because you were the right person for the job. 
And I feel like the people that have been getting into office are not the right person for the job. And I feel like in a sense, we reached that with Trump, not to segue into Trump because we won't. But I feel like that's what pissed so many people off is the fact that they learned that anybody with a head on their shoulders that you can think logically and is a supreme being in some aspect can do this job. And to be honest with you, that was the whole point of the job. It wasn't meant to be this political realm and theater that we live in where, you know, you sit on the damn chair for like 50 years, Biden, and not do shit. Yeah. And all of a sudden you want to, you know, you create the 1994 crime bill, which explicitly targeted, you know, African-Americans and the fact that the crack cocaine is much cheaper to purchase than cocaine is. And so the heat increased the, um, the sentencing to where you were caught with crack versus coke. A lot of people don't know that. And it's, it's the best man for the job. And this dude is clearly not the best person for the job. And I feel like that was kind of the agenda going into this. And yeah, fuck me. Yeah. So what's your bet? Where are you throwing it out there? Since we're going to run a dead pool a year. I want to say you're a year. You're giving him a year? Yeah. Wow. He's I, gonna, I guess he's I'm not, looking at it like, yeah, go ahead. He's going to trot to that finish line, I think, seriously, because they want to make it as, you know, agreeable as possible to the masses. And that's why they're just they're just throwing him to the wolves in a sense, like this whole border crisis we got going on, not to segue, but like just this. And, and he's like almost like shunning it off. And the fact that he's choosing to, you know, target certain incidents more so than others, you know, being the Colorado shooting. And, and, and then to look at the immigration thing, we have like 6,000 people a day coming over the border who are illegal. I mean, who's to say that they could go get a gun and do these mass shootings, but no, let's focus on the guns. So I feel like that they're gonna push a little bit more narratives um, down the American people's throat before they allow like this uh, abrupt change in the, you know, bringing up the 25th amendment. I think that will shock the herd, so to speak, too much. They're gonna slowly try to integrate this bad boy in. You know, I think that it's um, what I would refer to as jingly keys. Jingly keys. So Biden not wanting to get the negative publicity down at the border. Uh, let's not forget, he his administration put a gag order on the border, uh, people that work on the border. Not a lot of talk about it. Project Veritas, thank fucking God. We've got Project, uh, Project Veritas out there who exposed what's going on inside of it, but all the bleeding heart liberals, the people that feign so much emotional distress, the AOCs, um, that kind of nonsense, those individuals, they don't give a shit. They made it obvious. They only gave a shit because they were hoping it would encourage other people to dislike Trump. Obama built the cages. Trump tried to make it better, but he still had a border crisis that he needed to work with because the Democrats on the other side going, come on, guys, cross the finish line. We'll get you some shit. So I wouldn't be surprised. You know, this is just completely conjecture, but I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't turn out that Democrats have involvement or some sort of like in um, agreement with the cartels in Mexico. But again, speculation, not making the accusation. It was the but case beforehand. Look at Pablo Escobar. The U.S. know he was shipping shit over. They were so involved in that. And the, the government has been corrupt for a long, long, long time. So absolutely, I'm sure there's some kind of incentives there. Yeah. But the point is that Biden has a gag order on the, uh, the people that work at the border. They also are enforcing trespassing. So they're telling people, you come out there trying to record, they're going to run you off. You cannot be a witness to this. These bleeding heart liberals that gave a shit about kids in cages when Trump was in, it's far worse now, and they don't care. So the next time they come foaming at the mouth, spewing how much you should be emotionally charged about shit, you probably can just look at them and be like, I don't take advice from a mad person. Because that's what some of these people are turning into. They're turning into lunatics. And they're foaming at the mouth, trying to make you change who you are to accommodate what they think is right. I have a problem with that. When I say taking our country back, this is what I mean. It is saying, thank you for sharing your opinion, 
but the kids table is over there. There's a crayon book. You know what? There probably is one or two partially broken crayons. Keep yourself busy over there. The adults are talking about how we're actually going to fix things because you sitting at the table, pounding your fists and crying about how there's so many injustices when you haven't even tried to create your own balance elements to stop or right those injustices by creating your own sense of harmony in your life. So that if you want somebody else to have more money on an hourly basis, open a fucking company, make it successful like so many other Americans have done and give those people jobs and see how long that company will last if all you care about is somebody makes more money off of it. If that's all you give a shit about, how about you start putting yourself in a position where if you say, well, more people should have houses. Okay, great. How many houses have you built? Oh, more people should have mortgages. Awesome. How much money do you have to lend somebody so they can buy a house? Yep. Stop telling people how to run their own business when you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. True. So Beautiful. with that... That's how I look at it. Whenever these bleeding heart liberals run up and these progressives foaming at the mouth, trying to tell you how to live your life. I look at it that way. What did you do to give you this credibility, this level of why I should listen to you? Your professor told you that you're a bad person and you believe them. And now you need to convince me I'm a bad person. So you feel a little bit better about yourself. Mm -hmm. Check into an institute. Get a psychologist. Get help. Don't try to get me to buy your illness. I'm not doing it. It's true. Because, I mean, it's so much easier to take the easy way out. And what I mean is, is that making yourself the victim, right, and saying, oh, this is why I didn't achieve so-and-so. And this is why I didn't get to where I wanted to be in life in any aspect, whether it be relationships, spiritually, financially. It's, and, and honestly, it's a daily check you have to do with yourself. Because I know even me personally, like I love to like, you know, feel sorry for myself and all this bullshit. No, it's just, it's that negative side of your, you know, psychology that pushes that. And the media and the left love to push that little button that we all have. And that's why it's so effective. That's why you see so many people who feel this way. And no, like every, anywhere where you are in your life right now, no matter what it may be, is based on decisions you've made in the past. Not all decisions. There's always going to be some screwballs that get thrown in there because remember, we are in an infinite game, right? We are not in a finite game. There is no rules to life. There's no winners and there's no losers. It's infinite and you can either keep up with the game or you can be out of the game. Um, but we we are our ultimate destiny. And what I... and to block that side off of what it is to be a human being and what it is to understand the fact that the American dream means that you can make anything you want out of life if you're willing to do the work, um, that bothers me. And I, it's something that the left has, has definitely shoved down the throats of the American people. Um, and I feel like it's, you know, and, and there are, there, you know, I think this all, it all goes back to like inequality and there are inequalities in the United States. There are, but it, it's, it's socioeconomical inequalities and it's because of previous policies that have pushed us in that direction. And I feel like I always hear everyone, you know, we, we hear a lot about racism and to be completely honest with you, I feel like that a lot of racism is created mentally. And what I mean by that is if you constantly tell someone they can only achieve something in life because of the color of their skin, generation to generation to generation, they're going to believe it. Um, as a matter of fact, one of the most vibrant times in the African-American community was post-Civil War. And that's when they were completely freed. Um, they were able to start their own businesses, their own communities. Uh, all entrepreneurship was at all time high in the African American community, and uh, it, it was it was very vibrant, right? I mean, growth was ex exponential. And then the American government stepped in and came up with the Welfare Act and stated that because of your you know your past events that you were uh, you were entitled to this certain amount of money, and that's when you kind of saw this economical disparity kind of you know grow in the African American community. And I think it continues now. And, and yeah, it's, it's just, it's, and, and there are, like we said, there are 
inequalities, but I feel like that the the root. I always like to get to the root of a problem. Um, yeah. And I never try to say that a problem doesn't exist because a lot of the things that are in the media do exist, but they don't exist because of what they tell us. They exist based on you know the the origin of of that problem. And like Chad has alluded to earlier in the episode, that you know the mass media. Um, you know, political parties, they don't like to get to origins on both sides. And, you know, that's what Thomas Jefferson always talked about. And that's why he hated the idea of political parties is because eventually you're going to get pushed into one narrative or the other, instead of, you know, the people actually ruling and the people actually deciding. And yeah, we're freaking right in the middle of it. Yeah. You know, I would say that a lot of the things we have are by design. You know, entitlement, when you're taught the concepts that create entitlement in a human being, that when whoever's teaching you the ideas of entitlement, question what's in it for them. So if you're really interested in finding out more about how when the government says we're coming to help, no other statement from the government should be more fearful from an individual's perspective for their long-term well-being is the government saying we're on our way to help. Now, FEMA, stuff like that, yeah, that's like it's understandable and fine. But what I mean by this is more of Pruitt Igo. If you're not familiar with that, look it up. Pruitt Igo was a housing community in Chicago that was specifically designed to help single mothers raise their children and give them quality of life. But there were rules and stipulations about being in Pruitt Igo. Part of that was no man could be in the house. And the really? government, yes, look it up, Joshua, I'm telling you, Pruitt Igo is, the building was built to last, I believe it was 70 years. It didn't make 20. Because police wouldn't even go to the place anymore because it was too dangerous for them because of what the government created. So the government created that. Pruitt Igo, look it up. It's a really interesting, there's a documentary on it. There's, there's all kinds of literature on it. Very interesting study, worth looking into. But anytime you teach somebody they're entitled to something, they have an expectation they receive that. If they don't feel, if they don't receive it, the sensation or feeling of injustice kicks in and nothing makes people more motivated to go out and do something against someone than to give them the sensation of injustice. So pound of flesh, biblically, that's about justice. So with all of that being said, what people don't understand is how they get played like a marionette. Well, we have a, a women's empowerment. What does the women's empowerment movement do? Pushes men out of the family. Is it okay to empower women? Absolutely. But the way that they're empowering women is to say you don't need a man. So think about this for all the people falling victim to that mentality. Men want and need women. If you're gay, fantastic. You want and need a partner. But for evolutionary perspectives, men and women want and need each other, especially the heterosexual couples. There's an energy in psychology that is not just socially structured. There's inherent differences genetically that separate. It's not just chromosomes based off of XY and, X, uh, and, and XX. There's more to it than that. What we have is we want that, but then women are pushing men out of the house because I don't need you. So the first little fight kicks in or the first medium, medium level fight kicks in. And then before you know it, guy's out. Don't need him. What does that say about your son if you're raising a boy? Do you think you're going to convict your son to a very similar fate to what you did to his father when you push him out of the house? No, my, my son, not my son. I am the exception to the rule. I'm smarter than average and I'm the exception to the rule. Won't be my kid. And then he gets through relationship after relationship. 
Either he becomes a beta in the relationship and can't stand up for himself. Now, there are exclusions and exceptions, but the rule is not an exception. And the rule shows that most of those individuals are going to turn out to be more beta men. They're going to be more of the ones that get cheated on and or non-respected. If your ideology wants to lead you down that path, don't think for a second that you won't affect your own children's life. And this goes for the men too. If you're used to a culture where women don't really matter that much, you'll go on to the next because it's like a supermarket of opportunities. But you want to be able to establish a strong family unit. Mm -hmm. You are also part of the problem. Absolutely. And that's something that doesn't get talked about because that's almost promoted now by social media, by uh, the news, by, you know, advertisement, you know, sex sells. That's absolutely true. And not just like Chad said, it's not just from a, you know, a woman empowerment position. It's definitely from a, you know, what men should strive for position. And it all goes back to that, you know, cash for clicks. I mean, Instagram is almost porn. Like just to be fucking yeah. honest with you. Yeah. Like, uh, have you ever gone to your <laughs> Instagram, your Explorer page before? Oh my mm. gosh, go look at it. Mine's horrendous. I don't know what to tell you it's on. Yeah. But like it's like, so like Lululemon meets porn. It's just. <laughs> It's just chits, Chad. Like the whole dang thing. And I'm like, where did this come from? Like I thought, I thought I looked at something besides this. And just uh, you know, also like you can see, I see, and we saw on Netflix as far as like you know the the normalization of pedophilia with that uh, that show with the 11 year olds that actually Cutie. picked off. Cuties. Yeah, cuties. Uh, um, you know the normalization. Of, yeah, the, the the normalization of of cheating. I feel like it's everywhere. Like, go look at your freaking Instagram post and just see, like, oh, so-and-so has a boyfriend. So, like, it's 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 complete, like, trying to change the construct of what a nuclear family is. And I feel like there's uh, – not that every family is perfect. Even families that are nuclear have their issues. But that's that's a mankind issue. But, that, you know, in, in traditional aspects, and I don't mean as far as your sexuality goes, um, you know, the, the, the construct of having a, you know, a stable – parental figure um that being two uh not based on sexual you know it, two males you know two females female male doesn't matter it's just the fact that there's a, a stable structure of two you know adult individuals in the in the relationship is, is the most important thing and yeah i, I didn't even think about that freaking male one that male one's so true because it's so easy to fall down that rabbit hole as far as like you know, the grass is greener on the other side. And yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy, so to speak. You know what else is crazy, Chad? You know what also, I when you're in a solid, um, strong bonded relationship, you will fight for your partner mm -hmm. and you will fight for you. But if you don't have that strong bond, you'll fight for you. So what does that do to a nation? If you'll fight like hell for your partner and you to have that American dream, because whenever you're in a partner or unison, what's the American dream? Two-story house, white picket fence in mm -hmm. suburbia. You got 2.5 kids. I don't know how they get five or 0.5. <laughs> right. But you got 2.5 kids. You got a dog named Fido. You know, you got your kids going to, you know, whatever school it is. You kiss, you know, in the morning. You say, have a wonderful day, honey. But if somebody ever fucking challenges that family, you're ready to fight. Now, you can go further than that and say, well, this is my community. I am good and taken care of for who I am as a person. I'm working towards my career goals. I'm also working towards my family goals. Now, somebody does something to threaten your community local mm -hmm. government officials, people like that, you want to get involved. Well, now you're willing to go to fight for that. Well, now you go beyond that. What's your state level? Somebody's messing with my state. I'm motivated. I know what I want. I know what I want to preserve. I'm going to fight for what my state needs. Then you go beyond that state satisfied. You feel good there. Now I'm going to fight for what my country needs. So as long as you're satisfied as an individual at a core level for who you are as a person, 
And then you're fighting for somebody who else in your life that you want them to have what you want them to have because you love them. Not, I love them because they help me orgasm. No, you love them because they help you find out who you are in this life. They also want you to have the best as you want it for them. You have that partnership, the atomic family. Mm -hmm. Then who's like, they will both, they're now a partnership as a team. They can fight harder than an individual going, screw it. I'm going to go swipe right on somebody else because I'm in the hookup culture now. So why tear that down? Why is there a motive that we should take that apart? Because you want more apathy. Is If somebody wants something to be pushed through in government, just the fewer people that show up and say that they don't care or the people that don't show up, you just assume they don't care. Apathy is the opposite. Of, actually, indifference is the opposite of love. Apathy is the vacancy of a lot. I don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm nulled to the world. I'm numb. They want it. So if you want to really get a political sway, like in political warfare, that is an element of political warfare. That's not the foot soldier. That's more like the people that's in the battalion behind them. Because the foot soldier is going to show up in things like racism. Foot shoulders are going to show up in gender issues and inequality, pay gap, stuff like that. On the backside is the next battalion which is the ones that are going to say, let's just take apart everybody at their, their soul fabric level. As soon as we can do that, then they'll just turn over the keys because nobody is going to want to fight for something together. And that's what I'm seeing more of. Now, you and I are privileged that we live in Florida, privileged in the sense that our parents made some good decisions or we made some good decisions. But we're living here because we chose to live here. So... We're under a great governor. Other states don't have that. And sometimes what you don't have, you get envious that others do. And it's easier if you can't take it immediately than to just not want them to have it. And just a little segue for all those people up there in New York, California, Michigan, uh, talking shit about Florida and how we don't know what we're doing. I sure see a lot of your license plates around my state. I mean, it's almost time I drive around. New Jersey, New York, California. Yeah, so make sure you don't come here and vote the same way because you're here for a reason. Don't New York or Florida. We want to preserve that reason, right? Chad and I are going to come out with some shirts pretty soon that say uh, Make America Florida because I (laughs) do feel that that's that's very much the case. And yeah, 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 it's, it's, the universe loves small. And so I say the universe because the political correctiveness in me, and I have to respect all religion to know my, I myself as a Christian, as you can go see on Chad's other show, um, uh, Growing Up in the Wild Suburbia, we talk about a religion a little bit. Um, but no matter what you believe in, the universe, is, um, it loves small. And certain small steps, whether it be choosing to stay together, whether it be choosing to work through certain individual issues, whether it be choosing to try hard in school, what it be choosing to, et cetera, right? Small steps in the universe turns into big outcomes later on. And Chad kind of just broke it down for you as far as, you know, nuclear family, uh, nuclear community, nuclear state, nuclear nation, it, it, it adds up over time. And we have to start getting back to that nuclear, uh, that, that nuclear idea as far as, you know, the United States of America. And that doesn't mean whether you're black, white, Asian, doesn't matter. Uh, it, it, it's the vast majority of people doesn't matter. And we got to stop going down, you know, these people's paths. I mean, a great example is I saw the other day that uh, Vice President Harris didn't salute the, uh, you know, the the officers at Air Force One that were military officials. And it's actually like everyone has, she's the first, I don't want to say the first one, but she's, she's one of the very few who has not done that. And the fact that people who don't honor those traditions of, you know, people in the military, um, that's very unsettling to me. And the fact that they can, can go about their day and know that they didn't you know, show praise to people who died for this country. I mean, Chad and I, before we jumped on, we're talking about the Civil War. Uh, we were talking about you know, all kinds of different you know, events in history that have led us to where we are. And if we start forgetting 
if we start canceling the fact that those events happened uh, that brought us to where we are right now, um, you know, in this example, vice president just completely, you know, you're supposed to be, you know, the next in line, so to speak, as far as the chief commander of the United States, you should really, really respect your, you know, your military forces. And yeah, super freaking unsettling. I, I don't like, I mean, I thought the other day, I'd rather have Hillary than, than freaking Kamala Harris. I mean, I just, something oh. that she's so, she's such a fraud in every way. Like, go dive into her freaking tax returns. I see now that we're talking about, you know, let's bring people's financial, you know, situations up front before they run for office. I mean, Camilla Harris, she made a lot of money in the stock market. Her husband's a lawyer who's white, by the way. Um, you know, just it's, yeah, it, she's such a fraud. Like she, she, I don't want to dive down her, but she, she is the, the, the pinnacle that is this um, emotion baby, I'm going to call it for sure. She is their guy, their girl. So, you know, they're, they're, that's why she didn't run for office because when she ran for the presidency, she got her ass whooped. And it's because so many people knew that this girl was such a freaking broad. And the only way that, you know, this particular controlling entity that is, you know, the leftist movement could get her in is that they put with someone that she could kind of control in a sense. And I think that's definitely the agenda that's moving forward because she's just, oh, God. Yeah, between her and Obama, they've got Joe in a pretty controlled position. So, yeah, it, there's so much to talk about with this, especially whenever it comes to, you know, respecting our, our people in uniform. I, look, can we all agree that our military has done some things that are pretty undesirable? that have done things that are atrocities. It's not our military's fault as the individuals that enlisted. They do what you're taught to do. Whoever made the decision to do what they do. Like I was listening earlier to some stuff about uh, Clinton, uh, Bill Clinton, and what he considered to be his worst atrocity when he served, like for his, uh, for his terms. And that was the Hutu and the, he, uh, the, 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 uh, Oh, Hotel Rwanda is the, the movie they made about it. The Hutus versus, I forgot the others. Um, and he decided not to get involvement with it. And that's what he considered to be his greatest atrocity is that that was his greatest regret of his presidency was not actually getting involved with the U.S. military to go in and stop the genocide. Because he knew that if he sent military in, it would, one, it would have bad optics and two, other people would die, including United States military. So he stood down. And that was the thing that he did that he really wished that he didn't do. But we have other things. Remember, our military only knows what it knows based off its intel. Some of that intel could be CIA. Let's face it, CIA is not what it was supposed to be. Central Intelligence Agency has morphed into this thing that it is, was not supposed to be. It was supposed to be one that was supposed to monitor things for secrecy around the United States president to find out anything that would be a harm, but predominantly on a domestic level. And it grew outside of that. Now, um, we have had things that have happened in our history that we can say is not exactly great. Us going into Iraq. Did we go into Iraq because we wanted to liberate the country? Or did we go into Iraq because they were threatening to move away from using the US dollar as their petrol exchange? You know, or was there something else, right? I don't know. I didn't make decisions on it, but I can tell you from the outside looking in, I think it's a lot more than what George W. Bush was talking about. Oh, yeah. They shot our own missiles at us when we first got there. The Scud missiles, don't forget, we armed Iraq to fight against Russia, right? So all those weapons that Saddam Hussein had were our weapons. Mm -hmm. So like as soon as we got there, like the, the, the first incident, I have a friend who is in um, – who was in uh, Desert Storm, and he was like, man, the and that was before the Bush administration, right? That was George H.W. Bush, and he was like, they were shooting our own shit at us. You know, like, they, they we supplied that, and this whole weapons of mass destruction, so it's not just a leftist corruptedness, it's definitely a both-way thing, you know? Yeah. George W. Bush being both. <laughs> Excuse me. So yeah. I just, thought about, I just thought about the whole incident just then. Most of us look at it like it's <laughs> Most, most of us look at this thing like it's left or right. We look at it like it's a beast with two heads. The United States is a hydra. Am I saying it's a bad creature? No. 
but there are some heads that are up to doing shit the rest of us don't know about. Mm -hmm. So with that, am I say, do I say scrap it all? No, no. We scrap it all. We are so easy to be taken over by other countries that mm -hmm. have no interest in scrapping at all. We don't want to get to the point where Iran could take us over. Right? Iran is not known to be the one that's our threat. Although they are a threat, they're not Russia, they're not China. Russia and China are our biggest threats on the world stage that I'm aware of. Now, could there be more? Fuck, I don't know, possibly. But they're the big ones. Right? With that, China more than Russia. Russia's diminished a bit. Now, we have done things, but for us, any one of us individual citizens to take it out on an individual that enlisted, it is not your place to take it out on the person enlisted. Your anger and upset and hostility and frustration is not against the person they enlisted. They did it to serve their country because they're doing it because they feel their, their, their country is worthy of serving. Now, if you don't feel the country is worthy of serving, Get a bus ticket. I'm sure that Venezuela would take you in. So if you're not willing to support these individuals, perhaps you need to get a job where you have to work your ass off in a hazardous environment where you may not come home and somebody else is going to have to actually make sure you get buried. Maybe you should go that route to at least understand what it's like to put your life on the line in order to make a living and try to do something with purpose. I've worked in the power industry. I've lost people I know because of industrial accidents. When you take on a hazardous job, you start to understand an appreciation for life in a way that you won't sit there and criticize our uniformed individuals. So with that, there will be people that'll make shitty decisions that's involved in politics and also the industrial complex. The hydra of it all is that it's not left and right. It's left, right, industrial complex. We've got, or I'm sorry, the military complex. We've got, um, Joshua, I'm, I know I'm missing some here. I think maybe. Some, the, I mean, the, the Hydra has so many heads. Again, the root of the problem. That's what we should get to. And I, I, I like how you talked about how, you know, countries overtaking countries. Because don't forget, boys and girls, this is a competition. This is, you know. The, the, the U.S. dollar, you know, this is uh, economics. This is, you know, uh, you know, physical territory. This is a game that we are in as a nation. And you should always want your freaking nation to win. Because if you don't like someone telling you you have to wear a mask, or if you don't like someone telling you that you have to do et cetera, then you don't want other nations to win. And we have to stand behind our nation. We have to stand behind our, you know, our men in uniform. Because they are going out and protecting that nation, no matter what political theater is pushing certain agendas at a certain time. Like Chad said, it's all tied back into individuals. It's all tied back into intel and command and blah, blah, blah. But again, <clears throat> we have a certain say in that. So we have to start making sure that we don't put crazy people in there and we think rationally, that we think um, especially economically, think with your wallet. Um, yeah, we'll be a better place. You know, it's one thing that I want to talk on this, then we can finish up this subject, move on to the next or finish up the show. But something I want to add, if you're a spoiled little shit, you're entitled, you feel that you know better than other people. As I mentioned earlier, you haven't accomplished a goddamn thing yourself, but you're telling everybody else how to virtuously do their life. If you're that person, know that the freedom you have in the United States gives you the privilege to hold those views. And if you yourself don't cherish that, then please do us all a favor, sit down and shut the fuck up. Because other people will fight for your right to be able to sit there, stand on the American flag, burn it, cry out that everybody has done bad things because you didn't get a chance to play your video games until 2 a.m. or whatever the fuck you're going to cry about because you're such an insignificant life at this moment, then just shut the fuck up and sit down. Let us do what's necessary in order for you to keep that freedom. Because once you lose it, you better believe you don't have the constitution to get it back. Mm. Don't have it. 
It would be people like myself and Joshua. It'd be like the people that's in the United States military. It'll be like the people that say, I know you're going to threaten my job because I speak my mind, but I stand for the freedom of being able to speak my mind. Even if your freedom to speak your mind comes after mine, let's keep it on an even playing field. If you decide to be a little bitch and try to go after the job, then I just can't wait for karma to bite you with its sweet little lips because it's going to, it's going to get you because libs eat libs all the time. You're not getting away from it. It's very true. What you don't see is a lot of conservatives eating each other. We may not work well together, but we don't eat each other. That is very uncommon. And I say us because I lean more right right now, conservative than I have throughout my life. But it doesn't mean that I'm actually a declared conservative. I'm still non-party affiliate. So if you want to be able to keep your right to sit back and tell everybody else how wrong they are, then when it comes time to really making decisions, shut the fuck up. Let the people that actually are willing to do the work make the decisions. And then you can sit back in the back seat and cry about the fact that mom's doing 53 and a 55. Whatever it is you need to cry about. <laughs> But cry about it nonetheless, you'll have the right to. But if you get your way, you won't have the right to. And you don't even fucking realize it because you're so drunk on the idea of power. You won't look at every other place, not every other, every place on the planet, bar none, that have done what you're saying we should do. So I will say to close this part of the conversation up, Shut the fuck up and let us do what we need to do so you can still be free to gripe. And with that, Joshua, do we have anything else we want to touch on? No, I was actually <clears throat> just looking on like some, uh, some other countries like Venezuela that kind of went down this route. And they're actually like, they're almost all on crypto. Like they don't even use their own currency anymore. Well, and, they have to get off of their own currency. Yeah. So like if you have... If you had, I saw one statistic that was if you had 53 million, whatever the Venezuela currency is, that if you came to the United States with that, it would be worth 53 cents. That's yeah. how, like, that's hyperinflation, people. That's like massive inflation. And, you know, I said vote with your wallet and to tie this all back in about Chad, you know, protecting freedoms that, you know, if, if we don't correct what path we're on right now, then that's, that could be us. And, if not, maybe, you know, Chad's, you know, Chad's generation or maybe even the millennial generation, definitely Generation X, they want after me, is definitely going to feel a lot of that magnitude with, you know, us, you know, printing out all these stimulus checks with, you know, all this kind of just money being thrown to other countries and this and that, we pay it back. Um, yeah, that's, uh, you know, America was not built on, on social, you know, socialism. You know, there are a lot of socialist aspects as far as, Oh, Generation Z, is that what it is? Generation Z? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm Generation X. You're a millennial Z's after you. And then what? There's one more in this, like Echo Boomer or something like that. I think I just, uh, there's so many freaking, you know, who makes this up? Who knows? I know I'm a millennial. I get called a millennial all the time. So I just embrace that, you know, that ideology. Not to distract, <laughs> yeah, not to distract it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Please continue. I'm yeah, sorry. so like we're, we're moving toward this, you know, this this you know economic change and, uh, and uh, eventually one of our generations is going to have to hold the bag so to speak and that's what really worries me and it's 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 what's going to come after all this stuff and hopefully we can freaking right the ship like i like i said i'm I, I try to be very optimistic i try to be very you know things are going to work themselves out and i hope that that's the case as far as you know the united states goes i hope that we can kind of you know, get off this, you know, little roller coaster ride that we are on currently. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. And as far as, you know, as far as topic goes, people, that that's, I think that's it for the day. I'm going to, you know, tomorrow I'm going to Washington, D.C. I'm going to try to get you guys some good footage and talk and chat about this. Um, we're lucky enough to where uh, the, 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 the fencing that is around the United States Capitol building is gone. So that'll be pretty cool to get pretty close. I'm going to try to get some monument pictures. I've never been to Washington, D.C., so this will be a very interesting experience. I have a 6 a.m. flight, so this should oh, be very shit. fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. So it's going to be a 4 a.m. morning. 
don't worry, boys and girls, I'm going to be ready to go. Yeah, it's been a beautiful night. Happy Wednesday. Um, just keep on trucking. I, I, I solely believe that we're going to make it through this. And that's whether or not you agree with my certain political ideologies or not, because I don't care. You don't have to agree with me. I don't have yep. to agree with you. But my ultimate goal is that everyone succeeds. So with that being said, stay beautiful, pony boy. I'll <laughs> see you next week. We, 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 we did it. And yeah, just, just keep on trucking. Worry about you. Focus on the future. Don't don't let these people, you know, steer you in a certain direction. Yeah. Just remember, it, like I mentioned, we are all in this together. I say it all the time, but I really do mean it. If you want to sit back and tell everybody else they're living their life wrong and you haven't even got out of your own mom's house, basement or whatever, just know that there's different soldiers in all different aspects. You do have the people that are enlisted in the United States military. Then you have people like Joshua and I. We're still going to fight. Even if I find you detestable, I'm going to fight for your ability to at least say it. Freedom of speech is a major thing. Your right to a firearm. You may be in a position right now that you're so insulated by the people around you that you don't think you would ever need a firearm. And you've never come across somebody that wants something from you worse than you want to keep it. You may not know what it's like to actually need to protect yourself. And you may sit back and play video games all day and watch movies that make you feel like you know how to actually defend yourself. And you've, or you may have even take some martial arts, but never have actually used it. You don't know how to fight. You don't know how to defend yourself. You would probably cry like a little bitch, you know, defecate all over yourself or whatever. If somebody were to pull out a knife, whatever it may be, you've never been in the position you needed a firearm. You haven't gone through any training. All you do is tune in and let Don Lemon on CNN tell you how you're supposed to think. Just spend more time shutting up. You know, let us do what we need to do. I mean, just get that even if you don't agree with what we have to say, we're still fighting for your ability to say it for years and years and years down the road. You get your way. You may think you won because you're tribally like enlisted in your own belief system. Give it a couple of years. I don't know if you've noticed, but libs like to eat libs. Progressives eat each other too, and they'll eat everybody else. If you think that you're safe, you need to wake up and start looking at how all these other people attack each other. Go to Twitter. Spend one day on Twitter. Take a vacation day. You're going to need a mental health day afterwards, but take a, vac a vacation day. Check it out. Watch how they attack each other. Just peruse it. They eat each other alive. So with that... We're in this together. We don't have to get along. Your mom was wrong. We just don't need to go to bloodshed. You know, get over yourself. I spend every day trying to figure out how to get over myself. Every time I get upset, frustrated, other people are going through their own shit. I need to hold my own constitution, hold who I am as a person. But at the same time, I need to give other people the rights that I want to have for myself. So I want the right to be able to bear arms. And I will have it. And I expect you to have it as well. Now, unless you have mental illness or violent crime, felony type things. Other than that, I'm going to fight for that opportunity for you. So do know that if you're going to be one of those fucking assholes that decide to go off like the Columbine boys or the Colorado guy or the dude that went in because he felt sexual impurities in Atlanta, oh, uh, you're going to have whatever motive it may be, but I'll tell you right now, I had, if I get my opportunity and carry wherever I want, you're not going to make it very far if you're going to be that asshole because I'm going to defend everybody around me to make sure that they're safe. So with that, don't be an asshole. May that be the, like, should that be the lesson of the day? Maybe yeah. we should offer a lesson of the day every episode. It's lesson of the day. Don't be an asshole. Yeah, just don't be an asshole. It's, yeah. I don't, yeah. want to I don't want to, I don't want to carry it on, but we can pick it up later on, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, oh. <laughs> make We've examples. Gone. All I'm going to say is make examples of these people. That's all I'm going to say. If you're a mass shooter, maybe we should increase the penalty. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. If I you, am. If you want to go in and gun down innocent people, then guess what, bad boy, we can bring back some stuff. You know, we can bring back a lot of things that we used to do to people who committed such crimes. 
you know, we're actually main nation now. Okay. You know the reason why? You know, the reason why we haven't got to that point where we actually make it like, if you're going to be that person, you're not going to have an easy life. Lawyers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lost. You go in, you're the good guy, you're the savior, you do the right thing, you shoot the guy, and some attorney figures out how to make you look like a bad person, court rules in the other person's favor, you're out of a career, whatever it may be, it's caused people to pull back from it. But I guarantee you, if you're in a situation where it is a declared mass shooting event, and the cops can just take you out and not have to worry about any legal recourse, I guarantee you mass shootings would go down. Yeah. Or, I mean, because, uh, you know, now like lethal injection is, you know, if, if, as far as the death penalty goes, that's the predominant way. But, you know, let's bring back like firing squads. Let's bring back burning at Gallows. the state. You know what I mean? You want to shoot up a school? You want to kill kids? We'll burn you at the state. Let's see how that goes. And we'll, yeah. just put, we'll put it on ABC. You know, yep. I bet you there'll be less school shootings. There won't be three meals. There won't be three hots and a cop. It'll be. No. Yeah, right? I guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, rehabilitation by the state. Now, I'm not necessarily a full-blown death advocate or you know, death yeah, penalty. Just an example. But, yeah, I guarantee you deter. I will. Th this is one of the things about human nature. We cannot live in a utopia for multiple reasons. It's the same reason why socialism will never work. Communism never works except for the government because we all value things differently. Even if we have the exact same upbringing, you can see it in family units with multiple siblings still have different viewpoints, different things that they want to achieve and different out view or a world out or world views. So with all that being said, punishment is one of the fastest deterrents. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean it's a guarantee all the way across the board deterrent, but it does deter. So with that, let's go ahead and close up the episode. If you want to find out more about this fantastic little topic, then by all means, you should probably comment in the comment section. Find out more about where we're coming from versus just jumping to conclusions if you already know our minds, because if you do, you should probably play the lottery because you're fucking awesome. Oh, in the meantime, uh, share, share the video with people in your life you feel actually would be able to pull something out of this and get some value. Maybe it'll open up some discourse between you and another person and you can discuss whatever you want, pause the video wherever you like, go through the whole damn thing, have a watch party, whatever it is you want to do. We're here to try to create dialogue between people. That's why it's called waking the people. Now, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate my co-host Joshua McClendon for what he does behind the scenes. He works his ass off to make sure that we get enough information. We have good talking points. He is preparing himself. He works not one, not two, but three jobs that I'm aware of during the week and still makes time to do this, uh, this show. Now, I personally do two jobs to make sure that we can still do this show. With that, if you wanna be a contributor to the show, you can go to, you can share the show first off, that's awesome. Uh, there's also some ways you can get in touch with us. Uh, you can send us, um, you know what? Let's go ahead and give them an email and then they can just send us over an email, whatever for contributions in that way or however they choose they wanna be there. Or even if they wanna join the show at some point in time, you can find us at wakingthepeople at gmail.com. Uh, that'll be going on until we get um, our own URL. It's our own webpage. Uh, with that, you wanna join the show, you have a contribution, you have a topic you'd really like us to talk about, or if you just wanna tell me I'm an asshole and Joshua's a damn good looking dude, by all means, please do. You can throw that out there. You know, I'm not exactly the most aesthetically appealing person. I got a voice for radio and a face for <laughs> the Wizard of Oz. It's a good uh, face for radio and a voice for television. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but with that, guys, gals, we're in this together. Let's, you know, you can still be an asshole. That's fine. Let's just not be an asshole that takes away everybody else's rights. So, that's Sir Chad Everett Brochures. I'm joined with my co-host. I'll let him sign on his exit. Joshua McClendon, as always, just, you know, mwah, just have a good week. We're going to make it through it. Wish me luck in D.C. If, uh, if, you see him in the, if you see me on the news, come get me. 
you know, just come get me. But I, I highly doubt that's going to be. We may need some stuff. bail money. <laughs> <laughs> just come get me. Um, have a great week. We'll see you guys next week. Hope you enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Sayonara. Sayonara. <laughs> Love you.